but I've had a a bit of a legal issue. I have been basically under a little bit of a gag order. We're dealing with the lawyers right now. Hey guys, Blessing here. So in case you guys haven't heard, it looks like Patricia Bright is in some serious legal trouble. Patricia herself confirmed this in a video she posted a month ago. Take a listen. The first stream of revenue we have made on this channel has been through products and courses. Now I can't get into it, but I've had a, a bit of a legal issue, which meant actually for six months, I was not able to sell any other digital product. All right, so before I let you guys watch the rest of that video, allow me to give you a little insight into the products and courses Patricia Bride was referring to. So approximately a year ago, Patricia created the Brick platform, which is an avenue that she uses to primarily teach people how to manage their finances. Now, under the auspices of this platform, Patricia runs a successful YouTube channel and at a particular point in time, Patricia Bright started selling an online course with the purpose of showing people how to become influencers and self-employed entrepreneurs. The first stream of revenue we have made on this channel has been through products and courses and we have made £74,000 over the course of the year on those products and courses. So the course did very well, so many copies were sold and I was even one of the very first people to buy that course online. And I also did a YouTube video in which I reviewed the usefulness of the course and also went further to answer the question on whether or not the course is worth your coin. So I have the video linked in the description box below in case you'd like to go check it out. So back to the gist. Patricia Bright mentioned in that video that she is under a gag order and that she has been legally restricted from selling any more online courses. And this restriction was imposed only six months after the initial launch of the break course. Now I can't get into it, but I've had a a bit of a legal issue, which meant actually for six months, I was not able to sell any other digital products. We're not gonna talk about it, but I have been basically under a little bit of a gag order for a period of time, you know, we're dealing with the lawyers right now. So to break the story down a bit further, on December 11th, 2020, which is approximately six months after Patricia started selling the break course, Patricia Bright and her team sent out an email to all customers who had purchased the break course, informing them that the course would no longer be available to them. And the reason stipulated in this email is, it is our intention to provide our followers with the most valuable, relevant and engaging content possible in order for them to level themselves up. We are not in the market of selling products just because. So anyone would interpret this to be that the break course is being retracted because it is not up to standard, but nothing is further from the truth because Patricia Bright herself has now revealed that she has not been able to sell additional products due to the legal issues she's having and not because she just decided to pull the course off the air as suggested by the email sent out by Patricia and her team. So was the content of this email a deliberate attempt by Patricia and her team to mislead her fans in believing that all is well while she was actually going through a legal battle? Another question is who sued Patricia Bright and what grounds could they possibly have for litigation? One thing is clear, the lawsuit in question is directly linked to her first online course called The Break Course. So I did some investigation to ascertain what Patricia Bright might have said in her course to warrant the court of law to put a ban on it. And the only thing that really popped out is the reference she made to losing £60,000 to Mode Media, an influencer marketing company that Patricia worked with four years ago. So if you have watched a few of Patricia's videos, then you most definitely have heard her tell the story of how she was not paid by a certain company even after she had delivered the assignment. Non-payment, late payment or mispayment. You may be in a position where you might lose out some money or they might not pay in time. 
I'm gonna tell you a bit of a horror story that I dealt with in this space. Now, I had worked with a big media agency for a long time. I had done a lot of projects with them and they had a 90 day turnaround for deals. And so I had just done about four or five deals with them with really big clients. And the amount was around 60,000 pounds a lot of money. I think it was about three days before I was expecting my payment to come through where I got a panicked call from the manager who I used to talk to at that company where she had told me that she had lost her job and the company had gone under. That meant that my 60,000 pounds had gone down the drain. Unfortunately, I never got it back up until this very day. And every time Patricia Bright told this particular story, she was always careful not to mention the actual brands that she worked for. I've had this happen to me to the tune of 60,000 pounds. I was working with a media company, a media agency actually called Glam Media, and then it changed to Mode Media. And I had done some projects with them, three to four outstanding projects with them, and they had payment terms of three months. And I remember receiving a phone call from someone who worked at the company who was, and she literally called me crying saying, Patricia, the company's going under. They've taken our laptops from us. I don't know what to do. But one day, six months ago, I guess Patricia wanted to add some spice to this story she had told so many times. So she went a step further by explicitly mentioning four brands she created promotional content for under mode media. This was when I was working as an influencer and um, I had worked with a company who only paid people like myself in a three month period of time. I had been really lucky and I had booked back to back work for big brands. And uh, do you know what? I'm just gonna say it. Johnson & Johnson, P&G, Nivea was the brand specifically and also River Island. I remember watching that particular video and thinking, oh no, Patricia, you didn't just do that. You know, from a legal point of view, this is bad publicity for these brands, given that Patricia Bride is a public figure with lots of influence. I was actually due, based on all the projects that I'd done, I'd done all the work up. It was to the tune of about 60,000 pounds. And I can't believe I just called them out, but you know tag them maybe they'll give me the money back so mentioning and linking these brands in a non-payment case could therefore be used against her in the court of law as publishing a libel against these brands so in my opinion it is highly probable that at least one of these brands is now suing patricia bright for defamation because let's be honest here if patricia has any financial issues with any company it should be more media because Patricia didn't have any direct contract with any of the four brands she dragged into this. I did all the work, I invoiced the company, the company that I was working through. The company was called Mode Media. That company no longer exists at this point in time. Besides, all of these brands have categorically stated that they already paid Mode Media in full for services rendered. So in my opinion again, they shouldn't even have been mentioned or dragged into it. And I know 100% that Patricia meant no harm calling these brands. I have watched Patricia long enough to understand her to the extent that there were no malicious intentions behind what she did. I mean, it's just how the girl is built. And many of you who watch her videos often can attest to that. So now six months have already passed and the case is still in court. If Patricia is found guilty of this, you guys need not worry that she will go to jail. Worst case scenario is that Patricia Bride would have to pay damages to any of those brands that might have sued her. And like she also mentioned, Patricia cannot say too much about this case at the moment because the court has now imposed a gag order on her. But hopefully once it's all done and over with, she'll be able to really share some details about it. So everything I have said so far and reported in this video of what might have led to a litigation is based solely on my personal analysis and judgment. 
Patricia Bright herself has not officially revealed what the lawsuit is all about. So just a quick disclaimer that I might be actually wrong, but it cannot be a coincidence that Patricia Bright stopped selling her course six months ago, which is exactly the same period in which she made that video where she explicitly mentioned four brands that she had created promotional content for. And do you know what? I'm just going to say it. Johnson & Johnson, P&G, Nivea was the brand specifically and also River Island. So let me know in the comments below what you guys make of all of this and I will be sure to update you guys once there is more certainty as to what actually transpired. So you go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to get these updates and I will catch you on my next one.